Hey, crazy kids, here's your lecture on the mole. And believe it or not, a mole, the shorthand for it is M-O-L, which is kind of crazy. Uh, by definition, it's the amount of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Now, you should remember carbon-12 because that's where the AMU came from. And really, they did this in order to relate the AMU to something we can measure in lab, grams. So, Amadeo Avogadro calculated the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that provides us with a perfect exchange of unit. So now, on the periodic table, you had AMUs, and we can convert those to grams per mole. The whole reason behind this is because the mole is a universal language or universal unit in chemistry. It allows us to convert many, many different things. You will use it all year long. Now, before we get into that, and that's really the who cares thing, we got to talk about how big this number really is. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is a mole. It's a number. So just like a dozen is 12, or I think a gross is 144, um, these are just, a, a, it's a number, okay? So just get it around your head that mole stands for a value, and that value happens to be a very, very big number. You may know how big this number really is, but maybe you don't. So that's like 23 zeros. Well, really 21 if I get rid of these two zeros right here. Um, let's talk about how big it is. So a mole of money. Could you spend a mole of money? Uh, sure, you could technically spend a mole of money. If you were to spend a billion dollars a second for 19 million years, you would spend a mole of money. All right, so it's kind of big. Could you eat a mole's worth of marshmallows? Well, that would be a lot of marshmallows. I don't know if you could do it in one lifetime. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you had a mole's worth of marshmallows, it would cover the United States 6,500 miles deep. So if I put marshmallows over the entire United States of America and I had a mole's worth of them, it would be 6,500 miles deep worth of marshmallows. So it's insane, right? Huge number. However, atoms themselves are really, really small. So if I had a mole of water molecules, could you drink it? The answer is easily. I know this because of how the mole works and how small atoms are. If I look on the periodic table next to hydrogen, I see 1.01. .01. The unit for that is grams per mole. If I see oxygen, I get 16.00 grams per mole. H2O, therefore, would have a molar mass when I add up the components of it at 18.02 grams per mole. That means when I have a mole's worth of it, it's only 18.02 grams. That's like a sip of water. You could easily drink it. So atoms themselves are insanely small, so we need a huge number of them, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, to make them more relative in our world. So we can actually have an amount we can talk about, like 18 grams. All right, now, who cares? I care, number one, you should probably care, number two, but really chemistry cares. The mole allows us to do many, many different conversions and calculations in chemistry. We're gonna do some really easy practice ones today. I'm gonna walk you through how I want these to look. Anytime you have a mole conversion, I'm gonna require it to look exactly like this. If you don't put units in, you'll take off points. If you don't show your work, you take off points. I think you get the idea. So let's do our first conversion. If we have 50 grams of helium, I'm curious of how many moles of helium that would actually be. The way you do this is you start off with your 50 grams of helium. You're going to draw a line, which is a conversion fraction, and then you're going to convert that into moles of helium. Whatever unit you start with is going to go on the bottom of your conversion fraction, because by dividing that unit, that unit goes away, and the unit we're converting to is on the top of our conversion fraction. This right here is grams per mole. Because that's grams per mole, that value can be found on the periodic table. If I look at helium on the periodic table, it is 4.0 grams per mole. So that 4.00 goes here, and how many moles is that per mole? That's per one mole. So now all I have to do is divide. So things on the bottom of fractions, you divide. Things on the top of the fractions, you multiply. So I would read this out as... 50 grams times one, which is still 50 grams, divided by four. That's how that looks in your brain. When I do this out, I get 12.5 moles of helium. However, sig figs. So here you have two sig figs. Here you have basically a conversion fraction. You're not gonna be involving conversion fractions in your units for sig figs. It should never govern your actual calculation. 
So those are not going to take into effect. So really, all I can do is my 50, my 50 here, which just happens to be two sig figs because of this little decimal. That means my answer has to be then rounded to two sig figs. Two sig figs, I can almost talk. So my 12.5 moles of helium turns into 13 moles of helium. This is exactly how I want it to look. You don't have to put all this fun stuff in here. But when I do this calculation, this is what you're passing in. I want to see all of that work. I want to see what you're starting with. I want to see the conversion fraction. I want to see your value before you round. And I also want to see your rounded answer. That's how that's going to look. All right, let's do another one. This time we have 17 moles of iron and we're converting to grams of iron. There it is, again, grams per mole. Let's see how this looks. 17 moles of iron. And I'm converting my moles of iron to grams of iron. Notice I'm using the units first. The units will govern where the actual values go. On my periodic table, I look at iron. Whoa, that was a bad E. FE. We get 55.85. The unit on that is grams per mole or AMU. So they're the same, but we're going to use grams per mole because that helps us convert from moles to grams. So in this case, I have my 55.85 grams per mole. How I read this would be 17 times 55.85 divided by 1. I kind of kind of ignored the divided by 1 because your answer is going to remain the same, but that's how it actually looks. So in my calculator, I have 17 times 55.85. I get 949.45 grams of iron. With sig figs, I have two here. That means my answer has to have two. My 949.54 for two sig figs, they're going to be right here. So this is going to round to 950, no decimal, grams of iron. Let's do another one. We have 1.04 times 10 to the 17th atoms of carbon. Ooh, what are we converting to? Moles of carbon. Oh, boy. Well, I don't have grams here. Hmm. But I have a number of things. And in my brain, I should realize that the mole is just a value. And that's how many things it equals. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be atoms, marshmallows, money. It's irrelevant. In this case, I'm going to be converting with atoms. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to start off from like 1.04 times 10 to the 17th atoms of carbon. And I'm going to draw my conversion fraction line, the same thing we've been doing. Now atoms is going to go on the bottom. And I'm converting it into moles up on top. Do I know a conversion between moles and atoms? Oh, you bet you do. That's Avogadro's number. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd anythings. In this case, atoms. Now, in your calculator, you could put your exponents, but there's a heck of a lot easier way. You can just do this in your head. When you divide exponents, you subtract exponents. So I'm going to be dividing my 1.04 times 10 to the 17th by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But in my brain, I can simply do 17 minus 23 and get rid of my exponents. There's no need to put this in your calculator. In fact, people make more mistakes than you would ever imagine. So I'm going to do that first. My 10 to the 17th minus my 10 to the 23rd. That gives me times 10 to the negative 6. That part is now removed. Now in my calculator, I can do 1.04 divided by 6.02. That gives me 0 0.173. Now I should write this correctly, which would be 1.73 times 10 to the negative seventh moles of carbon. But I also have to think about sig figs. Ooh, looks like I have three sig figs here. My answer has three sig figs. That looks awesome. I'm gonna want you guys to express that correctly. Um, when you're using scientific notation, your value has to be between 1 and 10. So my 0.173 does not abide by that rule, but 1.73 does. Let's look at another one. We have 8.6 moles of water, and I'm curious how many molecules it is. All right, I'm not dealing with grams, so I don't have to deal with the periodic table, but I should realize that a molecule is a thing, and a mole is a number of things. So I have my 8.6 moles H2O. I'm going to be drawing my conversion fraction. I'm converting my moles into molecules. One mole happens to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. All right. Now, I could put this in my calculator, or I could realize when I multiply, I'm adding my exponents. This right here is 8.6 times 10 to the 0, technically. So 8.6 times 10 to the 0, which is really just 8.6, plus 23. That's going to give my answer of times 10 to the 23rd. Now my exponent is gone. Now in my calculator, I can just do 8.6 times 6.02. That gives me 51. Oh boy, 
I'm going to move this over a little bit. That gives me 51.772 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so that number is not between 1 and 10, but also I have to think about sig figs. Here I have two sig figs. Here I have way more than two sig figs, so my answer has to have two sig figs. So I'm going to round this to 5.2, and then I have to move my exponent one place to the left. That's going to be times 10 to the 24th, and my unit on this is molecules H2O. Once again, this is exactly how this should look. You don't have to cross off this, I guess, but I want to see all of this work. All right, we'll put it in pink. Oh, let's erase this orange really quick. So all of this stuff, right? All of that needs to be there. I need to see all of these units. I need to see your answer before your round, your answer after your round. I, all of it has to be there. Don't short it. Our next one. We have 9.6 times 10 to the 30, 33rd. Wow, that's a lot. Atoms of potassium to grams of potassium. Hmm. I know I can change moles to grams, but can I go from atoms directly to grams? I think I would first have to go from atoms to moles and then do a second calculation from moles to grams. So this is actually two conversions back to back, and you're going to illustrate that as shown. I'm going to start with my 9.6 times 10 to the 33rd atoms potassium. I'm going to first convert my atoms to moles, and then I'm going to convert my moles to grams. I can put these two conversion fractions right next to each other, and in fact, that's what I want you to do. Now that I have all my units sorted out, and let's just look at these units and how they cancel, atoms is going to cancel with atoms because it's on the bottom of the fraction. You're dividing that unit. You're turning it into moles. Now my moles by moles, divided by moles, that unit is then converted into grams. That's what we're actually looking for. So in terms of unit cancellation, that's why we set things up like this. This is called dimensional analysis. All right, our first conversion fraction. We're going from atoms to moles. Oh, I know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms, great. For grams and potassium, grams per mole, okay, this information is gonna be on the periodic table. This information came from Amadeo Avogadro and his number, Avogadro's number. But let's keep on going. Potassium, looking on the periodic table, Potassium happens to be 39.10 grams per mole. There's that grams per mole. There it is right here as well. So I know one mole happens to be 39.10 grams. Now that I have all my work, I gotta worry about plugging this into my calculator correctly. Personally, and I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again, these exponents, just do in your head. Times 10 to the 33rd, times 10 to the 23rd, I'm dividing, I subtract 33 minus 23. That gives you times 10 to the 10. Now we don't have to worry about it. Now my calculator, I'm going to be doing 9.6 divided by 6.02 times 39.10. The ones here, when you multiply or divide by one, it doesn't change their answer, so you don't really have to put that in your calculator. For my answer, after I plug that through, I get 62.35. Now, with sig figs, I have two sig figs here. Remember, the number that you start with is really the thing that's going to govern your calculation. These are conversions. Your conversions should never really take precedent in what determines your significant figures. It's going to be the number that you actually start with. So that's the thing you want to concentrate on. So that means my answer has to have two sig figs. This is going to come out to be 6.2 times 10 to the 11th grams potassium. Cool. Let's look at another one. 45 grams of oxygen to molecules of oxygen. All right, now here's grams, here's molecules. I know I can't go directly to molecules, but in the middle, I can go to the moles. So this is going to be another two-step problem. We have our 45 grams oxygen. Ooh, two. Oh, oxygen's a diatomic. Hmm, I wonder if that takes in a point here. I bet you it does. The first thing I got to do is change my grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen, and then I'm going to be converting my moles of oxygen to molecules of oxygen. All right, let's see if we can start plugging in some numbers here. All right, our first one is grams per mole, and that's going to come from the periodic table. So oxygen on the periodic table is 16.00. However, I'm going to write in 32.00 because it's a diatomic. There are two of them. I have to double their mass. That's why diatomics are so incredibly important. And our second conversion fraction, we have our 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd per mole of oxygen. 
pretty good. Let's see how this looks on my calculator. What I'm gonna do is throw this right at my answer. I'm gonna be multiplying by 23 zeros, so my answer is gonna have 23 zeros. Now I don't have to put that in my calculator. In my calculator, I'm gonna be doing 45 divided by 32 times 6.02. When I do that through, I should get 8.47. Let's take a look at our sig figs. Looks like I start with two, I gotta end with two. This turns into 8.5 times 10 to the 23rd. Ooh, what's my unit here? Molecules. O2. All of that work is required. I need to see all of the units. And when I say all of the units, I mean all of the units. So in your actual calculation, see how these are units? Oh, I didn't want to use that one. Let's use green. These units are required. I want to see all of it. I want to see what you're starting with. I want to see your ending unit. All of that is worth points to me. Let's do one more and we will call it a day. 9.8 moles of, this looks like sodium chloride. I have two things here, a compound, to grams of sodium chloride. All right, so moles and grams, that's gonna be a one-step problem. I know that because I can go directly from moles to grams using the periodic table, all those values that has a unit of grams per mole. That's gonna help me out. Let's set this up. I get 9.8 moles of NaCl. I'm gonna be converting my moles of NaCl to grams of NaCl. All right, so on the periodic table, I don't have just an Na or a Cl, but I have them together, so I can get their molar mass to start with. I can do the pieces of the puzzle of this compound and then add them together. So sodium next to it says 22.99, chlorine says 35.45. I add those together, I get 58.44 grams per mole. So that value is gonna go right in my conversion fraction. Where? Well, it's gonna go on top this time. 58.44, because that's how many grams per mole. All right, if I multiply through here, I get 572.712 grams NaCl. All done? Not quite yet, sig figs. We got two sig figs there. It means I got to round this big value to two sig figs. So that's gonna become 570, no decimal, grams NaCl. And that is how the cookie crumbles. Hopefully you enjoyed the lesson.